So I'm going to solve this quadratic equation in real time. But the main benefit of this video is not for me just to list out the steps to get to the solution here. Really what I'm gonna to try to do is giving you uh, some insight on what I'm thinking. In other words, when I see this equation, you know, what comes to mind? Like what's my you know, considerations? What are the different strategies that I can take? And then of course, what's the best uh, technique to solve this equation? So that's gonna be the real value of this video. But uh, before we get started, I wanna give you an opportunity to solve this equation. And if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. And then we're gonna go ahead and get into exactly what you wanna be thinking about when you face a problem like this in algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, the whole point of this video is to give you some insight on what I'm thinking. So this is me. Here I am with my nice little happy face. And this is my supercomputer up here, right between my ears. So what am I thinking about? Well, the first thing I'm thinking about is, well, all right, I have this equation. Now I'm telling you it's a quadratic equation, but uh, obviously if somebody just you know put this on a piece of paper and say, hey, solve this, I would have to stop and think, what am I dealing with? Okay, what am I dealing with? So that's the first thing that you wanna think about in algebra. When you see an equation, you have to stop and say, okay, what type of equation? What type of equation am I dealing with? Because there's all different sorts of uh, situations. For example, if I put a square root uh, over this uh, X right here, now I'm dealing with something completely different, okay? So you need to kind of have, uh, you know, this kind of pattern recognition. And the only way you're going to develop, um, you know, that is just to study a lot of algebra. You have to study uh, how to solve uh, various types of equations. And the, the type of equations you solve in algebra uh, would be uh, the first type, so what we call linear equations. These are things like 2x minus 1 is equal to 9. Nice basic equations like that. Uh, and then you get into things like this, quadratic equations, but there's rational equations, radical equations, systems of equations, on and on and on. Uh, but I don't want to kind of belabor that point. But you need to know how to recognize what type of equation you're dealing with, right? So again, what type? Well, here is what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, this is a polynomial, okay? This is a polynomial, and uh, I know it's a polynomial because I have these these variables, okay, are to uh, a uh, whole number power, okay? So let me just kind of write this out. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. These are the whole numbers, okay? These are the, enter this is the positive integers, and then with 0, or the counting numbers, or natural numbers and 0. So in other words, this these um, uh, variables here are to these powers. In other words, I have x to the second power. This is x to the first. We don't have to write that there. But if we had x to the 0 power, what is anything to the 0 power? It is 1, okay? So I don't have anything to, like, x to the one half power. This is actually the square root of x. So again, you know, the whole value of this video is to get an insight. I'm like, all right, I'm absolutely certain I'm dealing with a polynomial equation, right? So you got to know what a polynomial is, right? A lot of people are like, I know what a polynomial is. I, if I, if you show me one, I would get it. Well, most people, well, many people would not be able to tell me what a polynomial equation is, okay? But specifically and technically, uh, this is a second-degree polynomial equation, all right? So in other words, I'm dealing with polynomials, and the degree is the highest power, okay? The highest power in here, again, there's a 1 right here, but we don't uh, write a 1. In other words, if we have x is equal to 5, we don't say uh, x to the first is equal to 5, but it's implied that you understand that there is a 1 there. So this is a second-degree polynomial equation, okay? And it is a quadratic trinomial quadratic trinomial. This is a, a quadratic. Quadratic refers to a second degree polynomial equation. Now, sometimes you can have quadratic equations that are like this. X squared is equal to four. But in this particular case, we have this center, uh, this middle term X. So we have like something like X squared uh, plus X is equal to four. And that complicates our situation a bit. 
And this right here is what we call a trinomial because there's three terms. Okay, so first thing I thought about was like, all right, I'm dealing with a second degree polynomial equation. Now, in my brain, I wouldn't do that. I'm like, oh, here is a lovely, friendly quadratic uh, trinomial. So that's the first thing. I know what I'm dealing with, a quadratic equation. Now, what I need to think about is, all right, I got to put my quadratic equation thinking cap on. And what does that mean? Well, I, I have to start thinking about what do I know about quadratic equations? The first thing that comes to mind is the following. There's always, always two solutions to quadratic equations, always, okay? Now, those can be what we call real numbers or imaginary complex numbers, and I'm not going to get off on too many tangents here, but uh, again, you know, for those of you that are going to be in, you know, an algebra course and whatnot, you'll understand this, but bottom line is there's going to be two solutions to this equation. Now, there's different techniques I could consider to solve this, okay? I could try to take the square root of both sides, but that's only if this particular problem is in a, a form that makes this easy to do. Um, I also could try to factor, and if none of that works, I can always use what we call the quadratic formula to solve this, and I could even use this thing called completing the square. So I have all these different options in terms of tools to get to the solution, and I know I'm going to have two solutions. Okay, so again, I'm giving you an insight on what I'm thinking about. I'm like, all right, I got two solutions here. So now, what is the best technique to solve this? Well, there is another thing that comes into play here. I have this quadratic trinomial written in what we call standard form. This is the highest to lowest power right here. So we have our x squared here, we have our x to the first here, and then we have our number here and it's equal to zero, it's equal to zero. And that is really, really very, very important uh, to do when you're dealing with a quadratic uh, trinomial. Okay, you wanna set um, all this stuff equal to zero. And you wanna do that for two reasons, okay? One, if we could factor this, okay, if we can factor this, then this is gonna be very, very easy to solve. So for example, let's suppose I have x plus two times x minus three is equal to zero. Okay, let's say these are factors of some uh, trinomial. Now, if you don't know how to factor, you absolutely must know how uh, to factor in algebra. It's probably uh, the number one skill that students um, struggle with that end up you know, causing them to fail, okay? So you gotta learn how to factor. But let's suppose I have two factors here. Now, what is this saying? Okay, well, this is a factor, this is something being multiplied by something else. So if I said, hey, I have two numbers here, I have something being multiplied by something else, but the answer is zero, okay? I have two numbers, I multiply them together, and uh, the answer is zero. What does that tell you about one of the numbers, okay? Well, one of the numbers must be zero, or maybe both of the numbers is zero, because the only way you're gonna get a, a product equal to zero is one of these has to be equal to zero, right? And this is an illustration of what we call the zero product property, okay, which is, is a, the, it's one of the easiest approaches, the best approach to solve uh, polynomial equations is to try to get the factors because if this thing times this thing is zero, then one of these things or both of these things are equal to zero. So we would just simply just take uh, each factor and set it equal to zero and solve, okay? So here, this would be x is equal to negative two, and here, this would be x is equal to three, and then we're done. Okay, we have our two solutions to this quadratic equation. So anytime you see a quadratic uh, trinomial, uh, and it's you know set equal to zero, you wanna be thinking, can I factor this? Can you factor this? And uh, so you want to attempt to factor a quadratic trinomial, okay? Now some of you who know the quadratic formula, which is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Do not run to this quad, um, the quadratic formula, excuse me. Don't run to the quadratic formula as your first option because this is gonna be a lot of number crunching. Now this is your last resort and it's awesome and it will get you uh, the solution, but you know we wanna be effective in terms of how we wanna solve this problem. So we want to see if we can factor this. Now. This particular type of quadratic trinomial, I refer to uh, these types as case one, okay? There's another type, a case two. 
Now, a case uh, one trinomial is where this trinomial written in standard form, highest to lowest power, the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared term is one, okay? So this is a case one situation. If you have a number other than one, like let's say four, okay, this would be a case two. Now, the procedure to factor a case two is a little bit different than case one, and there's different techniques you can use to factor these uh, quadratic trinomials, but I am going to show you a super duper easy way to factor uh, a quadratic trinomial if it's factorable, if it's factorable. In other words, uh, if I said factor 18, you were like, oh, okay, let me see, uh, two times nine. All right, factor 17. You were like, oh, that's just one times 17. This is prime. Well, guess what? These quadratic trinomials can be prime. All right, so we don't really know if they're factable, but we need to attempt to factor them. And let me show you a super easy way uh, to factor uh, these quadratic trinomials if they're factable, okay? And I like to teach this method because a lot of um, students just struggle with um, factoring. And this is, uh, again, an easy kind of direct approach. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this one and you're just gonna multiply it by this last number. Of course, that's just gonna be negative 20, right? One times negative 20, negative 20. All right, so we're gonna write that over here. And now we're gonna start thinking of factors, of all the factors of negative 20. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's going to be 1 and 20, 1, 20, uh, 2 and 10. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. And uh, for those of you that know how to factor, that's great. Uh, but uh, for those of you that are struggling, you may want to learn this technique. Okay, so here's all the factors of negative 20. Now you're, you're saying, wait, hold on here. Uh, isn't, um, you know, this a negative number, but you got all these positive numbers? Well, I'm not done yet. So this would be negative 1 times 20 is negative 20, or positive 1 times negative 20, or a negative 2 times 10, or a positive 2 times a negative 10, or a uh, negative 4 times 5, or 4 times negative 5. So when you're doing this uh, technique, just write down... Uh, uh, all these factors in pairs, okay? So you just start with one, you kind of increase like so. Now these are all the factors of negative 20. Now what does this have to do with anything? Well, what we want to do is look for uh, the uh, pair of factors such that we, when we add them up, we get this center coefficient. So right here, what do I have? I have a positive one X. I'm looking for a positive one. Okay, positive one. So let's go ahead and look at the sum of these here. So one, negative one and 20 is what? That is a positive 19. This is a negative 19, right? When I add these up, one and negative 20. Here is what? Eight, here is negative eight. Now, negative four and five, I get a positive one. Here is negative one. So which pair of factors gives me a positive one when I add them up? The sum right here is these, negative four, and five. So what does that tell me? Well, those are the factors, okay? So here, let me go ahead and just show you this real quick. When I factor this trinomial, okay, uh, and you have to have some awareness of factoring. If you're like completely lost here, you're like, you're, you got me totally confused, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, it's just an indication that you need to, you know, uh, study more algebra, okay? But hopefully most of you out there are familiar with what I'm doing. So here, when we factor this quadratic tr uh, trinomial, we're gonna have the factors of one x squared or x squared. We have an x here and an x here. So the question is, what goes here and here? Okay, well, we just got the answer. It's going to be these numbers down here, negative four and five. So this would be a negative four and this will be a positive five. So let's just confirm that I did this right. So x minus four times x plus five if I was to multiply this using the FOIL technique, that would be x times x is x squared. x times this 5 is 5x. Negative 4 times that x is a negative 4x. And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. And when I add all this up, I'm going to get x squared. 5x plus negative 4x is 1x minus 20. And look at that. It is the same thing as this right here. Okay. All right, so hopefully you're like, oh, wow, okay. I understand why you did that. 
But a lot of you would just know how to factor this. Okay, you'd be like, all right, I see the factors. I know how to do this. But for those of you, again, that are struggling in factoring, uh, particularly uh, trinomials, uh, you, you're going to want to know this technique. Now, I went over it very uh, quickly, but um, if you want to know more, check out my Algebra 1 course, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and you'll find full instruction on factoring, and you'll be a factoring um, expert by the time you finish my instruction. Now, before I finish this prom off, I'm going to uh, kindly ask you if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, it really does help me help others, okay? And I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important. So obviously I'm posting uh, my content on YouTube. I absolutely uh, am grateful for this platform because I look at it as my virtual classroom and I'm trying to get as many people into my classroom that are interested in math uh, or, you know, or really just need help in mathematics, okay? Because I don't want anyone to give up on themselves when it comes to math. That is absolutely unnecessary. So if you would consider subscribing, and if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell to get my latest content as well. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and finish up this problem. Okay, so now that we know that we can factor this, or we have our factors, uh, x minus 4 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, great, fantastic. I was able to factor this so we can use the zero, uh, the zero product property to get our solution. So we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for the respective, uh, uh, solve these respective equations. So this would be x is equal to four, that's one solution, and this would be x is equal to negative five, that is the other solution. Okay, so again, in terms of level of difficulty, this problem, I would say, would be like a three out of 10, okay? Uh, there's going to be much, much more challenging quadratic equations that you're going to have to know how to solve. But, uh, you know, the whole point of this video is to, uh, you know, give you some insight on the things you need to be thinking about, okay, in algebra. Now, I told you, hey, this is a quadratic equation, so I have identified that. But let's suppose you're taking a final exam or some other kind of exam where there's different sorts of algebra problems on there. You're going to have things that are not quadratic equations. Uh, you know, they're going to be, you know, logarithmic equations, exponential equations, radical equations, all different sorts of things. So, you know, the thing about it is this, there are no shortcuts in learning algebra and learning mathematics. What you have to do is really just put in the effort, but, uh, you know, you want to get a good return on your effort. And to get that return, you need great math instruction. You need comprehensive math instructions, not, not uh, math instruction, not just quick tutorials. If you try to take shortcuts, you're going to get... Uh, mediocre results at best. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.